So this time, ang titignan naman natin ngayon is yung uh, last chapter of Hebrews. No? If we focus lang muna natin sa uh, anin na verses, yung paragraph na yun sa, sa Hebrews 13. And uh, pinamagkata nga natin yung, yung, top, yung lesson for tonight is about love, marriage, and money. No? Dahil yun ang kanyang pinagtuunan ng pansin sa paragraph na ito. No? Love, marriage, and money. So again, if you, uh, you would like to turn your Bible sa Hebrews 13, verses 1 to 6, sabi doon that brotherly love uh, continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers. For thereby some have entertained angels unaware, unawares. <laughs> Remember those who are in prison as though in prison with them and those who are mistreated since you also are in the body. Let marriage be held in honor among all and let the marriage bed be undefiled for God will judge the sexually immoral and adulterous. Keep your life free from uh, the love of money and be content with what you have for he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we can confidently say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? God bless uh, his word. So, dito makikita mo yung, uh, notice na yung context dito sa kasasabi lang niya sa, sa nakalipas ng mga sentences na sabi niya eh, uh, dahil dito, dahil binigyan tayo ng kaharian na hindi kailangan mayayanig, Dapat tayo nagbibigay ng pasalamat at ng pagsamba na katanggap-tanggap, no? Ng itakot at paggalang, pagkamangha, no? Of course, dito makikita natin how can we uh, continue to serve God acceptably, no? Paano natin mapaglilingkor ng Panginoon Diyos ng katanggap-tanggap? Remember sinabi ng Panginoon Jesus sa Matthew 25 about separating the sheep and the goats, what, 26 I mean? Nung sinabi niya na, whatever you have done to the least of my brethren, you have done it to me. It's about service to the brothers and to the sisters, no? Uh, to the family of God, no? So, uh, ito ngayon yung kanyang uh, tinutukoy din dito sa Hebrews 13, uh, particularly from verses 1 to 3, about showing love to one another. Remember, this is addressed to believers, no? So, okay, since sabi niya, let brotherly love, sisterly love, uh, pagmamahalan sa kapatiran, no? sa pamilya ng Diyos, dapat ito ay magpatuloy, sabi niya. Huwag mong kalikta ang magpakita ng uh, hospitality sa mga dayuhan. Of course, siguro dito tinutukoy niya nangyayari siguro kay sa Old Testament. No? Uh, nangyayari siguro kay Abraham or in the Old Testament where probably others have uh, been entertaining angels that they were not aware of it. So maaari ito yung konteksto na, na tinutukoy ng Hebrews. We're not so, I'm not so sure. But the point there is yung love mo is manifested by showing hospitality no? and by remembering those who are in prison. Now, nung sinabi niya, remember those who are in prison, remember, tignan natin yung konteksto ng mga nakabilanggo noong first century church. No? Nakita natin, in fact, you have the chance kung makikita mo yung talagang first century church. No? Uh, talagang dungeon. No? Talagang dungeon talaga yung kulungan. And uh, we, we had the, really the, 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 the privilege, kumbaga, na makita yung kulungan na pinagkulungan ng mano ni na Peter nung panahon ng uh, first century, talagang grabe, talagang napakalit na, tapos simento, ang lamig-lamig pa, talagang dungeon. So, nung sinasabi ng Hebrews dito na remember those who are in prison, we have to understand and remember yung kalagayan ng bilangguan noong unang panahon. Walang higaan, walang kumot, walang talagang, oh, madilim, walang ilaw, walang heater, walang fireplace, talagang matindi, no? matindi paghihirap talaga yun. Hindi yung prison ngayon, Nakikita natin, no? alam, alam ni Kuyo Roger to. Ang prison natin dito is more of a... Mas, maga, mas maganda pa ang bilangguan kaysa sa two-star hotel natin dito. Eh. Yung pumunta ka sa mga motel. Tama ba Kuyo Roger? Pumunta ka sa mga motel dyan sa labas. Walang sinabi yan. Yung bilanggo natin dito is talagang... Um, oh, grabe. Uh, parang parang three-star hotel. Baga, no? <laughs> three-star hotel. Hindi lang yun. Yung mga lagal naman nila sa refrigerator nila eh. Mas maraming paralaman kaysa sa ref namin. Eh. Para sa bahay na, puro tubig at tira-tira yung ref namin. Eh. Yung ref nila doon, talagang pr uh, premium cut ng mga ano, ng ribs, ng kung ano-ano pa, ng lamb. Hindi. No? Anyway, so, nung sinabi dito na remember those who are in prison, hindi yung sitwasyon ngayon sa bilanggo. Kundi sitwasyon noong unang panahon na talagang pag ang, remember yung tinutukoy dito yung mga kapatiran na nabilanggo. 
Right? Mga kapatid, talagang grabe. Ang grabe sa itong nila noon. And so, ipakita yung pagmamahal na yun sa mga kapatiran, umaga, na nabilanggo, na parang sabi doon, kasama ka nila doon sa bilangguan na, na, na hindi natatrato ng maayos. So yung love na yun, kung titignan natin, yung uh, panawagan ng Hebrews 13 about loving one another, hindi na siya bago. No? It is a reiteration. Kung baga sana inuulit lamang nito yung panawagan ng Panginoong Jesus na magmahalan kayo sa isa't isa. The command to love is, sabi nga natin, not new. It is the, the very teaching of the Lord Jesus Christ. In fact, nung tinanong siya ng isang uh, uh, audience niya, sabi niya, what is the greatest commandment? Sabi ko yun. Sabi niya, love the Lord thy God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and strength. And the second is like it. Sabi niya, ano second? Loving your neighbor as yourself. No? Hindi sinabing love yourself and then you love your neighbor. Hindi. Hindi tinuturo, titulad ni tinuturo ng ibang mga uh, feel-good uh, church. No? Katulad ni Stephen Furtick na Elevation Church. Na sabi niya, dapat you love your, yourself first. That is not what Christ said. So hindi natin pwedeng imiskot ang Panginoong Hesus eh. Kung ano sinabi ng Panginoong Hesus, mahalin mo ang ang neighbor mo katulad ng pagmamahal mo sa sarili mo. Hindi yung humanistic philosophy. Ngayon karamihan ng ng humanistic philosophy pinasok ang evangelical church na kalungkot, no? So uh, babantayan natin 'yon. It's not about loving yourself, it's about loving your neighbor as you love yourself. And justification nila is how can you love others if you do not love yourself? That's humanistic. Why? Because by by default, by human nature, you will love yourself more than anyone else. So, alimbawa, yung sweldo mo, kalahati na sweldo mo, ibigay mo sa kapit ba, sa kapatiran mo. Gagawa mo ba yan? So, what preservation, di ba? Di, teka, ako muna, may maunahan ako eh. But this, that's self-preservation, right? And here is Christ saying, love your neighbor as yourself. In fact, in this one, is John 13, ang kausap niya mga disipulo niya, no? John chapter 13, verses 34. 35, sabi niya, a new command give you. Ano Love one another. He's referring to his disciples, mga, mga disciple niya. Mahalin niyo ang isa't isa. As I have loved you, katulad na minahal ko kayo, sabi ng Panginoon Jesus, you must also love one another. Why? Because by this, the people, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Yun ang mark na isang disciple ng Panginoon Jesus Christo. No? Love, having love for the family of God, hindi lang ka-church mate mo, humbaga, but rather a brother or a sister in the faith, you have that love for one another. Romans 13, nung uh, pinag-aralan natin yung uh, Romans 13, 8 10, ito rin yung, yung uh, turo ni Pablo, yung kanyang admonition na mahalin ninyo ang isa't isa. Sabi niya, dapat wala ibang mananatiling utang. Maliba na lamang sa utang ng patuloy na pagmamahal sa isa't isa. No? Let no debt remain, sabi niya, uh, existing or outstanding, except the continuing debt to love one another. Forever, for whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. Bakit? Kasi sabi niya, yung commandments na you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet. And whatever other command there may be, it is summed up in this command. Love your neighbor as yourself. Bakit? Why is that the fulfillment of the command? Kasi sabi niya, love does no harm to a neighbor. Pag mahal mo yung kapatid mo, hindi mo siya nanakawan, hindi mo siya uh, papatayin, <laughs> hindi mo kukunin ang kanyang asawa, di ba? Hindi mo nanakawan, hindi ka may ingit, no? Why? Because you love that neighbor. And sabi nga dito ni Pablo sa Romans 13.10, love does no harm to a neighbor, therefore love is the fulfillment of the law. Again, sa 1 Corinthians 13, if you remember that, in love, hope, and ano yun? Love, hope, and? Ano yung pangatlo doon? Sinabi niya yung love is the greatest? Faith. Diba? Lagi yung kasama niya yan. Yung love, hope, and faith. Diba? That among the greatest, sabi niya, love is the greatest. Kahit na meron akong pananampalataya that can move mountains, sabi niya, kung wala akong pagmamahal, wala rin. Diba? Uh, kung meron akong uh, yun, uh, matinding... Uh, Pala ng patataya na, in fact, sabi niya kahit nagpaprofesay ako o nagtatangs ako, if I have not love, parang lang ako isang maingay na bakal. So, like, uh -huh. may, may symbol. Oh, yeah. Why? Because love is the greatest. no Si Pedro, sabi ni, ni, ni Pedro sa 1 Peter chapter 1, 22, no? now that you have purified yourselves, dahil nga naborn na ginakayo, now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth so that you have sincere love for one another, 
Therefore, love one another deeply from the heart. Ang pagmamahala ng isang kapatiran is what? Deeply from the heart. Bakit? Kasi na, nabuhan na na kayo eh. Not of perishable seed, but of imperishable through the living and lasting or enduring word of God. First John, ang daming binanggit ni John tungkol sa pagmamahal. First John chapter 2, verses 9 to 10. Anyone who claims to be in the light, but hates a brother or sister is still living in darkness. Anyone who loves their brother and sister lives in the light. And there is nothing in them to make them stumble. O, kung tunay ka mananapaltaya, gusto mo lamang kung talaga tunay ka mananapaltaya o follower ng Panginoon Jesus, do you love the family of God? Do you love the brother and the sister in Christ? Because if you uh, do not have love for one another, then you're not a disciple of Christ. First John 3, uh, verse 10, this is how we know who the children of God are. Kasi sinasabi ni John, no? And who the children of the devil are. Malalaman mo kung sino anak ng Diyos at kung sino anak ng Diablo, no? Anyone who does not do what is right is not God's child. Bakit? Nor is anyone who does not love their brother and sister. So, love is the, the trademark no, of a follower of Christ. Uh, love that, uh, the way that Christ uh, loved, ano yun? sacrificial love, in the end, when love is convenient. No? 1 John, again, chapter 4, verses 7 to 8. Dear friends, seven, let us what? Love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. Paano po mamahal? Romans chapter 12, verse 10. Love must be sincere. No? Hindi yung pakitang tao lamang, hindi yung pandabas. But rather, it must be sincere. Sabi nga ni Peter, deep from the heart, no? Kamuhiyan, kung ano man ang masama. Hate what is evil, cling to what is good, no? Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. How do we love one another? By honoring others above ourselves. Again, si Pablo, sa Thessalonians, chapter 4, verse 9. Now about your love for one another, sabi niya sa mga taga Thessalonica, we do not need to write to you. For you yourselves have been taught by God to love each other. And in fact, sabi ni Pablo, you do love all of God's family throughout Macedonia. Pero, sabi niya, inihikayat ko kayo na ipagpatuloy niyo pa at gawin niyo pa ng higit pa. This. The command to love is nothing new. It is always uh, reiterated by Christ and even by His disciples. Bakit? Kasi that is the trademark na, sabi natin. That is how the world will know that you are a disciple of Christ, a follower of Christ, a child of God. How? When you love the brothers and the sisters. No? Merong kang sacrificial love sa isa isa. That's why we pray for one another. That's why we re remember one another in prayer. Pagka medyo may alam tayo, may kilala tayo yung kapatiran na nangailan ng tulong, we are there to meet that need. Um, even if it costs us uh, our time no? and our resources. That's the command. No? The command to love one another is nothing new. Sabi natin, it is always um, a, re a good reminder no? that uh, we are uh, known to be a disciple of Christ if we indeed love one another. Again, sabi natin, love is not uh, something that is felt. <laughs> It is not an emotional experience, although it involves emotions. Don't get me wrong. No? But it is not purely an emotional experience. It is a call, rather, when you say love, it is a call to meet the need of a brother or a sister. Example nga niyan sa verses 2 and 3 ng, Romans, uh, ng Hebrews 13, no? na you, know, you show hospitality to strangers. Uh, notice that they love uh, one another, love brothers and sisters, but this time he's extending it to strangers. All the Sabina scholars don't strangers na hindi mo kilala, but are, is a, a member of the family of Christ because it's true anyway. No, meron ka stranger ko nyari, hindi mo pa nanimit, pero galing siya sa ibang bansa, darating dito, kapatidan, hindi mo kilala, you are to assist. Why? Because he's a member of the family of God. No, and remembering those who are in prison. Now, of course, sabi natin, iba yung prisoner, iba yung prisoner yun, pero das, hindi na nga mahulugan, wala na siyang uh, significance. Meron pa rin. Yung mga kapatiran na 
na mamaltrato, maaring siguro sa Middle East, meron tayong mga kapatiran na mamaltrato, we pray for them. We are rem- remember them in prayers. no? Uh, we, uh, we include them in our private prayer time with the Lord. As if, sabi nga ng Hebrews, we are with them uh, being mistreated and being in prison. No? So love is not just an emotional experience, it is an action. It is a call to meet the need of a brother or a sister. No? The followers of the Lord Jesus are what? Members of a family, no? the family of God, God's kingdom, unshakable kingdom. And therefore, in the encouragement, no, we are there to look the need, look out for one another, uh, look after each other, and to make sure that we meet the needs of those who are in that family. No? Uh, we are to be concerned for those who are suffering, not, not just in prison, but anywhere else, as if we ourselves are also suffering with them. Kaya kung may kilala ko yung pastor na kunyari o titiya, kapatidan, o not necessarily pastor, but a brother or sister in Christ na naghihirap at uh, nag-struggle sa kanilang uh, daily needs, tayo who are able to to meet and, and, and provide yung kanilang need, even just for the day, we are supposed to be meeting that need of a brother or a sister. Why? Because that is love in action, no? hindi lang in word. Okay, so uh, you know, first uh, part ng Hebrews 13, no? uh, that is one way by which we can serve God acceptably. Uh, we can love, worship God acceptably by continuing loving brothers and sisters in the Lord. Meron siya again, um, mensahe din para doon sa mga um, asawa. No? Dahil sa verse 4, binanggit niya na you must hold marriage as honorable, no? uh, valuable, no? and keep the marital bed pure. Of course, we have to consider yung context nito. Bakit? Kasi nung panahon, according to some scholars, which is true, no? historical account will say na nung panahon noon, ang mga lalaki, eh, pwede magkaroon ng mistress. No? Magkaroon ng mistresses. Normal sa kanilang standard noon yan. A Greco-Roman culture, ang babae is, uh, yung kanilang asawa, is parang taga bear lang ng tagapagmana no taga magkaanak para may tagapagmana ng lalaki kasi remember nung panahon na yon hindi pwedeng magmana ang mga babae lalaki dapat para merong tagapagmana that was the culture back then no and uh, of course sinasabi nila dito na dahil nga pag hindi nagkaanak ng lalaki pwede pa silang kumuha ng ibang mistress para nga mag apart, apart from meeting their their desires eh uh, magkaroon ng heir, no? ng uh, isang legitimate o isang heir. No? So that was the culture then. Yung polygamous relationship, kumbaga. No? And ito si Hebrew, sinasabi niya kayo, kayong naborn again na kayo, hindi dapat ganun. Okay? Sinasabi niya na, dahil naborn again na kayo, hindi dapat ganun, you must uh, continue to treat marriage honorable. Palagahan, kumbaga. Palagahan niyo ang, ang, uh, ang marriage. And uh, pag sinabi niya in marriage bed na yon must be kept pure of course pinag-uusapan nito yung metaphor yan eh metaphor yan uh, about yung a sexual relationship between the husband and the wife na hangga't pare panatilihin itong uh, dalisan and how do you keep it pure uh, sinabi niya din sa verse 4 na, na because God will judge those who are guilty of adultery and those who are sexually immoral so how do we defile marriage by adultery or by sexual immorality and in sexual immorality in the context of having a mistress or having you know, this kind of sexual um orgies and all that which according to hebrews hindi dapat we must uh, keep the marriage uh, bond pure the marriage bed pure and it must be guarded no so of course uh, in sexual immorality or adultery we have to bear in mind this in the jesus diba? So in the Jesus, the law says that you know, thou shalt not commit adultery. But remember that if you look at someone else lustfully, you are already guilty of adultery. No, so grabe talaga yung 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 standard sa pagnan Jesus. So let's remember that as we read also Hebrews uh, thirteen, no sinabi don na uh, for God will judge uh, those who are uh, adulterous and those who are guilty of sexual immorality. It's a call na na pahalagahan, no? I respeto. Respeto mo ang, ang uh, mag-aasawa bilang babae at lalaki. Mag-aasawa bilang babae. No? Mag-aasawa ang babae at lalaki. Pahalagahan mo yan. I-respeto mo yan. At uh, wag, wag mong, uh, yun na, wag mong babahira ng anumang klaseng uh, uh, im- 
morally done according using the word of of Hebrew sexual immorality no of course kung babalik kami sa Romans chapter 1 and in study natin sa Romans chapter 1 yung man giving up their natural desires for women uh, must be designed nila yung men classify ng Romans yan as sinful di ba Uh, in the same way, women so they don't give giving up their uh, natural desires for women. Must uh, for men, pala, must be nilit nila yung the same, no? Women. So again, to pass dito nga yung yung uh, yung parehong kasarian, no? Na ngayon is talagang very openly endorsed by the government. No? Pero pagdating sa church, as a church, sempre dapat hindi natin uh, tinotolerate yon, no? Uh, because it, it goes against the very word of of Christ. It doesn't mean to say that we judge those who are identified as lesbians or gays. Are they welcome in the church? Yes, of course, they are welcome in the church. But if they're truly regenerated, truly renewed by the Spirit, they will forsake their old ways. They will forsake that. No, uh, But are they welcome to come in the church? Yes. Uh, are they willing? To, are they able to participate in uh, sacraments of the church if they have not yet been regenerated? It's not advisable because there's no point. It's only for the members of the body. But if they have truly been regenerated, na talaga nakilusan ng Panginoon, they will definitely want forsake and follow the teachings of Christ. You know, no, you know, you know, you know, katotohanan doon, no? We do not uh, drive them away. But we continue to uh, you know, uh, invite them, hoping uh, na as they come along, ma- ma- illuminate yung kanilang kaisipan by God's mercy. Oh, Jimmy? Ah. Uh, uh, okay lang ba na hindi ba mo tayo sila ng uh, Hindi dapat. Oh, hindi dapat. Un- until such time na talaga and have admittedly, openly forsaken yung role na yes I used to be a uh, gay kunyare but I know it is not according to God's teaching I am struggling with it pero I am forsaking it so that's different dahil doon makita may repentance eh. talagang pagtalikod no? but for those who have embraced it nasasabihin because God is a merciful God He accepts me who I am that's true but He also demands repentance yun ang call ng Panginoon Jesus eh. repentance eh. repentance repent meaning turn away from my sins come follow me No? That's the condition there. So for them, siguro to be to have an active role in the church, uh, Corinthians, I don't think that is scriptural. I don't think that it's very scriptural as as we will see. No? As we will see at the uh, Corinthians. Right? Okay. So uh, honoring marriage. So we discussed nothing in love, we discussed nothing in marriage. Now we go to money. <laughs> Keeping away from the love of money. And sabi ng verse 5 doon, sabi doon, Batin natin verse 5. No? Sabi ng verse 5? Yes. Uh, wala niya. I mean, sige, pakibas ngayon verse 5 doon. Ano sabi doon? You should what? Yes, ah, sige, kuya. Keep your lives free from the love of money Ayun, and be content with what you have. Because God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. Nice, beautiful. So again, keep your life free from the love of Money. Ang pinag-uusapan talaga dito is what? Covetousness. Ano yung covetousness? O greediness. Another one. Ano? ano yung covetousness? Gusto ko pa. Gusto ko rin ganito. Sakim. No? Ano yung greediness? Gusto ko pa. Gusto ko pa. Uh, Binigyan ko nga. Hindi, gusto ko pa. Hindi, gusto ko pa. Uh, kasi si ganito meron din. Dapat meron din ako ganito. Covetousness. Di ba? We covet. No? So it speaks about what? Uh, covetousness. Ano yun? The desire to want more no? than what is Needed. Nakakalungkot ngayon, siyempre, hindi tinuturo sa church ang greediness. Seldom do we hear a teaching about you know, about greediness or about being covetous. Instead, what they are preaching is what? You must pr- receive God's blessings and you must claim for God's blessings. So greediness is disguised nowadays in the form of claiming for God's blessings. Kaya napahinga niyo yung last Saturday, yung ginagawa sa, I've learned hindi lang pala sa, sa Bethel Church ginagawa yun, but in other Pentecostal churches, ginagawa rin pala yung every time mag-offering, they will pray na interest, dividends, uh, money in the mail. They're claiming for that uh, blessing as they give their offering. Again, that's greatness. Maliwanag sabi ng scripture. Sabi ng Hebrews doon, 
keep your life free from the love of money and be content. Makontento, no? Because God has promised, never will He leave you, never will He forsake you, no? So sabi nga natin nakalungkot, yung greediness, hindi na tinuturo, uh, it is now disguised as continue to keep on praying for God's blessing. Sino yung number one na promoter nito? Of course, maliban kay Bill Johnson na nakita natin last Saturday, uh, Bethel, Joel Osteen. <laughs> Joel Osteen, then si Magaling. Oh, si Nabenihin. Ito yung mga talagang, sino? Oh, si Maya, may kikita mo si Maya, talagang para ma-justify siguro yung kanyang mga surgical re- reconstruction na po, ano mga mga facelift na nagmukha na siyang joker, ano? Talagang matindi, matindi yung talagang ginagawa nila na teaching people to want for more, to want for more under the guise of blessing, seeking God's blessings, when in fact that is actually what? Covetousness or greediness, no? And of course, they will always quote Jeremiah 29, 11, that God has a plan for you. For I know the plans I have for you, plan to prosper you, not to harm you, but to give you a future. Again, totally misquoting uh, John, Jeremiah 29, 11, and always taking it out of context. I encourage you to read Jeremiah 29. 29 na lang. Pag 28. you 29 from verses 1 to 12. Makikita mo yung context, it is not a promise to every Christian. Sabi natin, when we, when we read the Old Testament, it is narrative. Declarative, meaning narrative. Sinasalaysay ko ano yung ginawa ng Panginoon Diyos sa mga Israelita. Never a promise to the modern Christian. Hindi. That promise was to the future generation of Israelites after they were exiled in Babylon. Okay? So, hindi talaga promise. But again, sabi nga natin, mga... The devil himself is a good, is very good in misquoting scripture when he tempted the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Huh? Meaning misquoting scripture. And that is what Benny Hinn, that is what Joyce Meyer, uh, Joel Osteen, Bill Johnson, even South uh, Elevation Church uh, under Stephen Forchick. Itong ginagamit nila, particle the ears ng mga nag na, Oh, ito pala yung plana ng Diyos para pa, i-prosper ako. But have they actually been preaching Hebrews 13 when, when he said, keep your life free from the love of money and be content with what you have. Why? Because God said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. No? Hindi na bago yan eh. Ito yung for Second Peter. Sinabi ni Pedro yan. Siguro parang ni Pedro, nangyayari yan eh. So ito si Joel Esteen na Bill Johnson, hindi sila bago talagang mga false teachers. Patagal na, panahon pala ni Pedro. <laughs> Sabi ni Peter. But there were also false prophets among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you. Ano yun? They will secretly introduce destructive heresies, denying the sovereign Lord who bought them, bringing swift destruction on themselves. Many will follow their depraved conduct and will bring the way of truth into disrepute. Anong gagawin nila? In their greed, these teachers will what? Exploit you with what? Fabricated stories. Sina, sina um, Joel Osteen, Bill Johnson, uh, Stephen Furchick, um, their condemnation has long been hanging over them and their destruction has not been sleeping. Are they aware that they are teaching a false doctrine? I think they are. I think they are because... If they're really sincere in in uh, the preaching, yung kayamanan na natatanggap nila, binibigyan nila sa mga mahihirap. Pero of course, alam natin sa balita, they were, na-feature sila sa mga balita, they have the biggest mansions in the state, they have the biggest income, oh, private jets and all that. Is that really what Christ wanted them to do? Christ uh, did not even have any of this, no? not, none of the comforts of life. And he was saying, deny yourselves, come and follow me. Ang sabi niya sa mga mayayaman, give your um, riches to the poor. <laughs> and uh, follow me. Nalungkot si mayaman kasi hindi niya kaya yan. Eh. Diba? And yet, uh, here are the, 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 the false teachers saying, claim for more blessings. Claim for more Taliwas sa sinasabi ni Hebrews that keep your life free from the love of money and be content with what? We have. Remember yung sinasabi natin sa Hebrews na the bitter root? Yung uh, the root of uh, bitterness? 
yung poison yun eh, di ba? That contaminate many, ito din yun eh, di ba? Many has been introduced, no? Many heresies have been introduced dahil nga uh, it will happen. But for those who are truly in Christ, meron kang uh, tatak ng banal espiritu that will help you discern this is not right, this is unbiblical, may spirit that will teach us, uh, will give us the, the discernment na talagang that's something wrong, this is not right uh, according to scripture, no? So keeping away from the love of money, we are told, stay away from the greedy ones and even the immoral ones and do not do anything with them. Basahin natin yung 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 9 to 11. Natin, no? Remember in Corinthians, uh, isa itong pangarap ni Pablo sa isang iglesia sa Corinto mismo. Specifically sa isang iglesia dahil nagkakang problema sila. No? May mga alitan, may mga immoral, may mga nagkakaroon ng problema which mahikita natin sa bawat church na yun, most often na. No? Then relevant siya. Ito si Pablo, sabi niya sa mga taga-Korinto, sabi niya, I wrote to you in my letter, <laughs> sinulatan ko kayo, sabi niya nung una siguro, no? na huwag kayo makisama sa mga sexually immoral people. <laughs> na, niliwanag niya yan. Sabi niya sa verse 10, not at all meaning the people of this world who are immoral or the greedy, the swindlers or idolaters, sabi niya ganun. In that case, you would have to leave this world. And sabi niya, Dati sinulatan ko na kayo na huwag kayong makisama sa mga sexually immoral. Pero hindi ko, sinas, hindi ko tinutuko, hindi ko ibig sabihin yung mga sexually immoral dito sa mundong ito. Kasi kung iwasan niyo yung sexually immoral sa mundong ito, yung mga greedy, yung mga idolaters, eh kinakalaan niyo umalis sa mundong ito. Nakita niyo yung point ni Paolo doon? Oh, you would have to leave this world kung yun ang pagkakaintindi ninyo. No, I'm not asking you to, um, I'm, as, I'm not asking you not to associate with, with such people who are in this world. Ang kanyang punto dito is, ang iwasan ninyo, yun nagsasabing kapatiran siya, yun nagsasabing ako'y kapatid mo sa pananampalataya, pero yung pala is ano, sexually immoral, for example, ay natalikuran yung kanyang sexual preference, or di kaya ay greedy siya, notice, sabi doon, but, but now I am writing to you that you must not associate with anyone who claims to be a brother or sister, but is sexually immoral or greedy. Covitos, no? An idolater or slender drunkard so that do not even eat with such people, referring, of course, to the breaking of bread. No? So ito yung sagot doon sa, halimbawa, ayaw kong talikuran yung aking sexual preference. Kahit lalaki ako, pero alam ko, babae ako sa puso ko. No? I mean, since sabi na kamali, I'm just sa paggawa sa'yo. I mean, uh, such a proud heart before a holy God, no? And then, uh, tinanggap ako ng Diyos sa ganito, pinatawad niya ako, dapat tanggapin niyo rin ako sa magtuturo ko ng Sunday School. But this, that is very contrary to what Paul was saying. Yung mga nagpapanggap, sabi niya, no, I'm writing to you, you must not associate with anyone who claims to be a brother or a sister, but who is actually this. this? Kasama dyan, hindi lang yung sexually immoral, but those who are greedy. But this? Yung mga gusto pang magkaroon ng ganito, ng ganyan, ganyan. Notice? We are not to associate them so, uh, or to associate with them. No? So, do, do we have to, can we associate with people who are, kunyari, yun nga, uh, openly gay and lesbian but not a believer? Yes. Kasi, ano naman eh, that's the only way you can share the gospel. <laughs> Exactly. Well, um, uh, sadly, hindi nila binabasa yung buong, hindi nila tinatapos yung buong uh, sinabi ni Pablo. Diba? There is therefore no longer any condemnation to those who are in Christ who live according to the Spirit not according to the flesh. Hindi lang tinatapos yun eh. <laughs> Ang gusto lang nila yung part na there is therefore no condemnation to the soul in Christ Jesus. Basahin mo yung buong sentence. If we are, let's not misquote God, di ba? Ayun ang pala yun. Eh. Basahin natin yung buong passage, yung buong context. Because ang sabi ni Pablo doon, yes, in Christ Jesus, wala nang condemnation for those who live in the spirit, those who are not according to the flesh. Yes. So yun, pwanda na, yun ang uh, exhortation doon sa mga, sa mga Christians. No? Sa mga greedy, dapat wala tayong uh, asosasyon na sa kanila ng mga nagsasabing mananampalataya, pero hindi pala dahil sa kanilang mga uh, taliwas na itinikilos. 
Uh, Proverbs 23.4, do not wear yourself. Wag niyong pagurin ang sarili nyo. No? Do not wear yourself out to get rich. Do not trust your own cleverness. Maraming passages sa scripture that will tell us not to uh, you know, um, love money. Never to love money. Maraming passages sa scripture. Uh, here are some. No? Sa 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 3-10. to Again, sinabi ni Pablo ito kay Timoteo. Sabi niya, If anyone teaches a different doctrine and does not agree with the sound words of our Lord Jesus Christ and the teaching that accords with godliness, he is puffed up with conceit, nagmamayabang siya with conceit, and understands nothing. He has an unhealthy craving for controversy and for quarrels about words which produce envy, dissension, slander, evil, evil suspicions, and constant fiction among people who are depraved in mind, depraved, deprived of the truth, imagining that godliness is a means of Gain. Ito yung mga nakikita natin sa, ano, sa mga prosperity gospel. They think na ba being godly is that they will be blessed by God. It is a means of gain. Parang doon kaya yaman. No? Uh, reminds me of that Filipino uh, yeah, healer way back in the 1990s. Na, no? Nung nagsabi, tuturuan kita kung paano kumita ng pera. No? By using uh, the gospel. Really sad. No? And then sabi sa verse 6, But godliness with contentment is Great gain. Ang pagiging baka Diyos na may pagkakontento sa sarili nga ay matinding uh, ganansya na. Again, no? For we brought nothing into the world and we cannot take anything out of the world. But if we have food and clothing with this, meron tayong damit, meron tayong kinakain, dapat makontento na tayo. Salamat nga tayo dito. Hindi lang pagkain, hindi lang damit. May bubong pa, di ba? Uh, although may oh, renda pa and midnight snack pa di ba? but those who desire to be rich ito na yung babara ni Pablo kay Timoteo sa mga nagnanasa maging mayaman they fall hindi sinabing they, they may fall baka makulog sila hindi talagang katiyakan those who desire to be rich fall into temptation into a snare into many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction bakit? the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Napakinggan na natin marami yung uh, justification. Oh, eh, hindi naman money is not the root of all evil, which is true. Because money is necessity. Di ba? Money is necessity. Lagi napapalimuanag, it is the love of money that is the root of evil. No? Uh, it is through this craving, dahil sa ganitong klaseng pagnanasa, that some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many Siguro talagang they were not with us from the very beginning because they have actually wandered from the faith. No? Kaya pag nakontento na tayo sa ating uh, possession, if we are contented with what we have, then sabi nga nun, we can now confidently say that indeed Christ the Lord is our helper. Why? Because he will never, alam na natin na God will never leave us. He will never forsake us. Why? Because God keeps his promise to look after his own children. No? Having godly contentment, we can now say with confidence in deeds of verse 6, that the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? Kinote niya from Psalms. No? Kinote ng Hebrews. Grabe talaga Hebrews. Eh. Laging kinote ang Old Testament passage. No? Kinote niya from Psalms 1.18.67 na kung saan doon eh, sinasabi ng uh, gumawa ng salmo na ito, sumulat ng salmo na ito, na kanyang kinikilala yung, matin, yung pagmamahal ng Diyos na kailan man ay hindi ba, magbabago. No? Steadfast love of God endures forever. Trusting in the provision of the Lord rather than trusting in His own self. No? Trusting, kahit na may enemies na siya, he still trusts in the love of God that endures forever. So tayo, if we learn to be content, we learn to be satisfied with what we have. We are confident in saying the Lord has always provided. You know? uh, the Lord will never forsake me. The Lord will never leave me. Why? At the end of the day, God is faithful. You know? So, madalas hindi, nagtitiwala tayo sa yaman. Madalas hindi, nagtitiwala tayo sa trabaho. You know? Naalala ko yun, nang may trabaho pa ako ng, oh, sa savings. Nang may trabaho pa ako ng sa Pilipinas na, maganda lang sa trabaho nito, talagang, Libre ang bahay, libre ang gasolina, libre ang kuryente, libre ang tubig, lahat, libre lahat. No? Talagang. And then, magkaroon ko reminder na do not trust in your 
own abilities, do not trust in your employment, do not trust in your bank account, do not trust, but rather trust in God. Kasi in any minute, pwede mawala yan. Pwede kang, ano, sa paano ka na ngayon. So it's a lesson that we should always trust in God, not in what we have. Kahit na malaki pa yung halimbawa, may million na pa tayong uh, sentimo sa banko, hindi tayo nagtitiwala doon sa milyones na yun, but rather we want trust in the faithfulness and in the providence of God. Ang importante doon is we are contented with what the Lord has given us. Now, whatever we have, if we have been given more, let us share it to those who are um, having some difficulties, challenges in life, learn to share because that is how we love one another by meeting the needs of our brothers and our sisters. So how do we how do we uh, love one another? How do we honor God? How do we worship God? How we serve God? Accept me with awe and with reverence. Of course, it is by what? By um, loving one another. Uh, make, making, uh, keeping it uh, honorable, uh, respecting it, treating it with so much value, and uh, keeping ourselves away from the love of money. No? Yun ang Hebrews 13, 1 to 6. So next Saturday naman titignan natin yung ibang commandments doon naman sa ibang mga kapatiran, uh, especially doon sa mga uh, naka, uh, big, nakarinig ng pangaral sa kanilang mga uh, teachers. No? We will discuss that next uh, Saturday. 